hundred years ago, the First World War was wrapping up here in Europe, but all of a sudden the world found itself in the grip of a very new conflict, facing a very different enemy. This time, it was the flu. And by the end of 1918, 50 million people had died. And in this graveyard in Ipswich, about one in four of the graves that winter were from people who fell victim. Within a year, it had infected 500 million people, a third of the world's population. Doctors were helpless. The majority of those who died were aged between 20 and 40. But could it happen again? I'm Chris Smith, I'm a consultant virologist at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge, and I'm going to explain where flu comes from, how it spreads, and what scientists today are doing to keep us all safe. The virus we call the flu was originally carried by aquatic birds like ducks and geese. Thousands of years ago, it jumped species and began to infect humans. Now we have our own human strains of flu, which circulate every winter, causing epidemics. But roughly every 30 years or so, a bird strain of the virus makes that critical jump into humans again, and we have no immunity. That's what triggers a pandemic. It's not just birds that fly though, humans are doing it too, and right now there's more than a million of us airborne around the Earth. The problem is, though, that when we fly, we don't just bring back tourist tat, fake sombreros and plastic pyramids. We can also pick up infectious diseases. We could bring back with us the flu. The reason people catch viruses like the flu when they come on aircraft is because these agents spread through the air. Every time you cough or sneeze, you can literally spread a disease because they are leaving your nose and throat going into the air, and if you sit next to someone who's got one of them, you can breathe them in and you can catch them too. So I'm in my seat and I have 10 hours to go. I've got my in-flight meal, but I've also got someone sitting next to me who's infected with the flu and they're expelling flu virus particles into the air. If I breathe them in, or if they land on the armrest and I touch the armrest and then eat my food or touch my face, I could catch it too. So the likelihood is by the time I get off this aircraft, I'm going to have flu too. If you feel rotten with aches and pains and a headache, stay in bed. Keep warm, send for the doctor. Don't go where there are crowds of people. If you do, you'll only give them your germs. Now many people, when they begin to feel unwell, will often go and see their GP or general practitioner. And some of these GP surgeries act as what we call spotter practices. That means they take samples and send them into labs like mine so we can see what's circulating. This is one, I'm going to go and see them now. If you'd like to open your mouth. Spotter practices are early warning systems. Dr Simon Owens takes samples from people showing flu symptoms. He's taking one from me so I can take it back to the lab to identify what viruses are circulating. The flu season runs from October to May, so we're, uh, we're hypervigilant at that time. And we're looking for people with symptoms of flu, high fever particularly. Obviously there are other causes of high temperature, or people traveling from abroad, so we have to be a bit careful. Um, but uh, certainly we feel it's, we're very committed to picking up influenza early, particularly as we're in a town where there are lots of um, schools and the university and so forth. So, it's good for the individual, but also on a national level in designing the vaccine. Labs like mine at Adambrooks can now detect flu viruses in just a matter of hours. They look for the unique genetic information inside the flu virus itself. This tells us which viruses are present and even whether they'll respond to antiviral drugs. And after three hours of testing, I'm very happy to report I haven't got the flu. Most flu vaccines are made using chicken eggs. The virus is injected into the egg, which acts as an incubator for the virus. One egg produces enough to make three doses of vaccine. The viruses are then deactivated so they can't give you the flu, but they do show your immune system how to recognise that strain of flu in future. This year's vaccine is available now, but it's still too early to say how effective it's going to be.
Because flu viruses are constantly evolving, they're a moving target for our immune systems. This is why we need to update the vaccine regularly. Cambridge University's Derek Smith is an international flu expert. His work helps the World Health Organization to figure out which viruses circulating now should go into next year's vaccine. Vaccines are actually really beautiful things because they're teaching our immune system how to respond to a particular pathogen, a virus or a bacteria. But the virus evolves in nature and it is evolving to escape immunity that people all around the world have so that the same species of virus can reinfect individuals on average for seasonal flu about once every 10 years. So the virus is changing, it's a moving target, and so the vaccine, the strains of flu that need to go in the vaccine, they need to be updated to follow that target, ideally to get ahead of that target. It isn't the rum ration, it's the flu fluid. And when the guards are on parade, each lucky dip is really very unlucky for the germ. The first flu vaccines were issued in 1945. Before then, the recommendation was a gargle with the flu fluid, whatever that was. Although these British soldiers might beg to differ. Pandemics are rare. The last one, swine flu, was nine years ago. 500 people in the UK died. Nowhere near on the scale of 1918. But could that happen again? The million dollar question. Nobody knows. We do know that in the last hundred years, it's happened once. We know that there's been three other pandemics in the last hundred years that have not been as severe, nowhere near as severe as 1918, still way worse than a regular seasonal flu year. But how, whether we're gonna get 1918 again? Yeah, nobody knows, but these are incredibly important questions. Um, the H5 influenza virus and the H7 influenza virus these other bird flu viruses that might cause pandemics, these are strains that are looking pretty nasty in humans. So when it comes to pandemics, it's not a question of if it's gonna happen again, it's a question of when. And the reality is that with more people on Earth and a more mobile population than we've ever had, the risk has never been higher. What we do know though, is that medicine and science are doing their best to stay one step ahead.